Hello and good afternoon, CTS 265, Section 840 students for the Fall 2015 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP route course, and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be another fantastic Cisco Learning Labs activity, uh, Discovery 19. And we're going to be looking at Implementing Policy-Based Routing, or PBR. So we have our topology here in front of us. And we're obviously going to be manipulating the traffic that's going to be coming from either the notebook or the PC through branch one uh, in order to make it make a decision. Now remember, policy-based routing is extremely flexible and it's commonly referred to as source-based routing. Remember, normal IP routing is destination-based routing. So when we have, let me change the color here real quick. Sorry about that. Get the lab to come back up. So when we talk about normal routing, we're talking about destination-based routing. So traffic that shows up here uh, at the branch router is routed based off the destination, right? So the packet comes in, uh, the branch router takes a look at the destination MAC address, the layer two address, and then says, is this packet for me? If it is, it then strips off the layer two uh, header and looks at the layer three information where you have your source and destination IP, then it makes a decision. So with policy-based routing, we're going to be taking a look at source-based routing where the routing decision is going to be made based on the source network and not the destination network. So let's go ahead and jump into this activity. So the first thing we want to do is um, hop onto the, whoops, sorry about that, hop onto the net the notebook computer here and we're going to do a quick trace route so we're going to go from user exec to privilege exec and we're going to say trace route 192.168.100.1 and so we're tracing to this interface right here uh, that is simulating this Ethernet 01 uh, interface network that we have over here off the HQ router so you can see that we go to 110.1 and then 10.10.21. So which direction are we going? Well, we start coming from the notebook. It comes this way. And then we go to, uh, which is the 192.168.110.1. And then we go to 10.10.21. And then we come out to our destination, right? So we hit the branch one router. We go up to the WAN cloud, and then we go to, to 10, 10, 21, which takes us down here to the HQ router, uh, which where we reach our destination, right? Now we're going to manipulate uh, the way that that traffic is flowing. Let's check the PC and see if the PC is doing the same thing. So we'll go from user exec to privilege exec, whoops, and we could just simply say trace 192.168.100.1. Let's see which way the PC goes. It should go the same way because we haven't implemented anything yet. It does 192.168.110.1 and then 10.10.21 through the WAN cloud. So it's clear to see that the PC and the notebook are both sending their traffic through the WAN cloud. So if we wanted to split that up and we wanted to manipulate how the notebook is sending its traffic and the notebook is 192.168.110.10, how could we do that? We want to make a routing decision based off the source network, not based off the destination network. So we'll come up to branch one and we'll go from user exec to privilege exec. We'll go into global config. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and create an access list where we're going to match the IP address of the notebook. So we would say IP access list uh, extended and then we're just going to say notebook so we're just going to call ours notebook now what do we want to match so permit uh, TC or IP host uh, 192.168.110.10 any right so we're going to permit IP traffic which is basically everything from host 192.168.110.10 to anywhere and so that is going to be our match now, we've got the ACL defined, and that's step one. It really will say step 1B. Step 1A is identifying uh, either the network or the specific host IP 
that we want to match on. So now that we've matched on the notebook, uh, we'll go to step two, which is we're going to create the route map. So now we need to create a route map that's going to allow us to not only match the traffic, but then to set the next top IP. So we're going to say route map, and we'll just call it notebook. And I'm going to match IP address. Now remember, this is a critical point here. Uh, if, if I had a prefix list that I was using, I would say prefix list, then the prefix list name. However, we don't have that. Uh, we have an ACL. So I put the name of the ACL. And now that I've done that, what do I want to do? Do I want to continue, default, description? So we can even put a description in here saying um, set statement for notebook route map to send traffic to 10.10.10.1 over uh, serial interface. All right, so there's our description. And then what are we going to do? Well, let's set the IP and what happened there? Kind of jumped down on me. Sorry about that. So we're going to set the IP next hop. And what are we going to set the IP next hop to? 10.10.10.1. So if I scroll over here, so here's our 10.10.10 network. And so what we're saying is, and let me switch the color here to blue really quick because the red line. So the traffic is going to come this way, and when it gets to branch one, it's not going to go that way, right? So that is not going to happen. It's going to come this way, and there is the next hop IP. But again, we're only doing it for the notebook, right? Remember, the PC traffic is not going to be impacted. So we head back over to branch one. Let's Whoops, let's wrap this up with our set IP next hop. And so we'll hit enter there. Or set IP next hop 10, 10, 10, 1. So now that we've got that set up, let's take a look at the route map. So do show route map. So there's the route map that we have right now. And basically, we just show that we have the name. It's referencing an access list. And we're going to set the next hop IP to 10.10. .10 dot ten dot one so step 1a was to identify the network or the IP that we want to source route off of step 1b was to create the ACL we did an extended ACL matching the notebook IP address step 2 was the route map step 3 is now we apply the route map to an interface so we want to go to interface and this is going to be uh, the oops, the interface on the inside right here. Remember, we want to set it here on the branch router so that when traffic shows up here, right on that interface, we catch it right there before the router has a chance to destination uh, route the traffic. So we want to do a source-based route. We're going to snag it right there on Ethernet 01. So let's come to branch 1 here, and we're going to say interface interface Ethernet 01 and then we're going to say IP policy route map and then the name of the route map and that's pretty much it it's a very straightforward process so I can also check to see I could say do show IP policy to see which route maps uh, and which interfaces those route maps are associated with for my policy based routing so then really, the last thing for us to do is to come to the notebook here, and let's run that trace route again, and let's see what happens. And that was pretty quick. The first hop goes to the branch router, but then where is the next hop now going? You've got it. We are now source routing off of the policy-based routing uh, ACL, and we are setting the next hop in the route map to 10, 10, 10, 1 but only for the notebook. So let's check on that. Let's make sure it's only for the notebook. If I come over to the PC, you can see the PC isn't going to 10.10.10.1. It's going to 10.10.21. Now, on branch one, let's also go ahead and say debug IP policy to take a look at what happens uh, when we are sending traffic through the interface. So we'll first start with the notebook again. So I'll say trace route 192, 168, 101. You can see that the policy based routing is in effect. And what do we see in terms of our output here? Well, we see exactly what we would anticipate that we're going to see. 
So you can see route map is named notebook. Item 10 is a permit. Uh, the source IP, 192.168.110.10, and we are doing source-based routing. The destination shows 192.168.100.1. Again, that's the uh, segment over behind the headquarters router. And how is it being routed? It's being policy routed, which means that PBR is making the decision to policy route this traffic. And that's exactly what we want. So let's see what it looks like on the opposite side. And let me put some distance in between us and that debug right there. Let's come over to the PC and let's see if the PC, when it hits Ethernet 01, let's see if the PC is doing policy-based routing. So it's going to check that route map. Uh, that has the ACL, that references the ACL, and we're going to see that the policy is rejected normal forwarding, right? And again, the source is identified. This is the PC source, 192.168.110.20. The destination is that network over behind the HQ router. But again, when it hits the route map, the policy is rejecting doing source-based routing on this packet or these packets, and it's going to do normal destination-based forwarding. It's not doing source-based forwarding because it's policy routing here. It's not doing that. It's doing regular destination-based down here because, again, the policy has been rejected. All right, so let's clear our screen there. Um, so remember we commented that policy-based routing is also static, uh, that it's not smart enough to figure out if things have changed in the environment. So let's test that out here in this setup. Let's see if it works. So right now we're coming to the 10.10.10.1, uh, which is this interface right here on the HQ router. So let's come over to the HQ router go from user exec to privilege exec and into global config. I'm going to go into interface. Uh, let me make sure here, do show IP interface brief. We're going to go into interface 10, 10, 21, uh, interface ethernet 0, 0, right? And I'm going to actually kick off a, uh, an extended ping here from the notebook. So on the notebook, if I was to say ping, uh, 192.168.100.1, repeat, and we'll put a big number in here, right? So as you can see, we've got all kinds of pings going on here. If I come over to the HQ router and I say shut on the serial interface, let's go back to the notebook. What's happening with the traffic? Exactly. The traffic is being dropped. And this is interesting, right? Because we're doing destination-based routing. And in effect, what we're doing here, and where did my mouse go? There it is. All right. Sorry, my mouse disappeared there. So again, what we're doing is we're doing I'm sorry, source-based routing. And so traffic from the notebook comes down to the branch router and the branch router right here has the policy based routing set that says send the traffic this way. However, that interface has just gone down. Branch one, because it's policy based routing and it's static, doesn't know any better. So all it knows is when I get traffic from the source IP 192.168.110.10, I simply send it over here to the next hop, 10, 10, excuse me, 10, 10, 10, 1. However, when that interface goes away, is the router smart enough, or the policy-based routing, we should say, is the policy-based routing smart enough to automatically make a change and figure out, oh, that next hop, does it resolve the next hop? Does it verify the availability of the next hop? And you can clearly see here that it doesn't do that. And this is why we call policy-based routing, uh, or this is why it's classified as being static, right? And not static in the sense of like a static route, although you might think of it like that, but it's static in the sense of 
once the route or once the next hop that it's going to goes away, it can't dynamically make an adjustment and say, hey, that next hop is no longer there. What I need to do now is I need to switch and I need to go back around the original path. And so that's not going to happen. So, and this is why, and this is going to dovetail nicely into the next uh, conversation that we have, which will be on IPSLA, right? Or IP service level agreement. And what IPSLA allows us to do is to actually check on the destination networks to see whether or not they're available. And so we can send ICMP echo requests uh, and try to get echo replies back. And again, uh, so this is going to wrap up Discovery 19, where we were talking about policy-based routing. And remember, PBR is source-based routing, and it's static in the sense that, as you can still see here, uh, it is unable to dynamically make routing decisions if the next hop goes away. And as soon as I say no shut, we come back over to the notebook. What should we see here? As soon as our next hop comes up, and there we go. And then everything's working great. All right. Well, this has been Discovery Activity 19. I thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on Monday.